After Apple announced they will switch to their own silicon, it was clear that this is the beginning of the end for Hackintosh. But question remains, should you still build the Hackintosh in 2022, like the one you see behind me here? Before we answer that question, let's look at a few things first. What is Hackintoshin, you might ask? Well, it simply means installing macOS on non-supported hardware. It could be a PC desktop or a laptop. For many years, this was possible because technically, the hardware component Apple used for their Macs could be bought by regular consumers and put inside a PC. That included components from Intel, Nvidia, and AMD. In 2015, there was some beef between NVIDIA and Apple, so support for NVIDIA GPUs was dropped from the next macOS versions. So after that, the Hackintosh community was limited to components from Intel and AMD if they wanted new macOS versions. Since Apple released the M1 chip, with its great power efficiency and performance, it was clear that Apple is heading towards a more tight and controlled supply chain for their components, same way they do for their iPhone and iPad. Apple Silicon Macs will also get new macOS releases for longer than Intel Macs, and an increasing number of macOS features will be exclusive to newer Apple Silicon Macs as new versions are released. Apple Silicon Macs are the only models that can also run iOS and iPadOS apps. Some features of the October 2021 release of macOS Monterey, such as portrait mode for FaceTime calls, will only work on Apple Silicon Macs. And since the M1 is a custom-made Apple SoC, you can't simply just go to the nearest micro center and pick one up. So what does this mean for Hackintosh? Let's take a look at two packs. The first one, what it means for Intel base Hackintoshin, and is there a possibility for ARM base Hackintoshin? Let's do Intel first. Put simply, the future of Intel base Hackintoshes will be same as the future of Intel base Macs. Apple still has few of those in their lineup, mainly the Mac Mini and the Mac Pro that you can still buy on the Apple Store. What this means is that Apple has to support these Macs with software update for some years to come. Based on their track record, I would say four or five years of guaranteed support from new macOS versions. In other words, don't expect updates of macOS for Intel Macs after 2026 or 2027. Of course, it's possible to use machines after their OS stops being updated. Figure another few years before software developers have moved far enough of the old architecture that key apps just stop working. My guess is that Intel Macs will be reasonably viable machines until about 2028 and 2030. In other words, feel free to go ahead and build an Intel-based Hackintosh, but understand it will be obsolete by the end of the decade. And so, probably will be the practice of Hackintoshing, unless we get an ARM-based Hackintosh. Though one may argue that Apple Silicon is simply an ARM-based architecture, hence it should be possible to install macOS on a supported ARM-based Windows system. Right? Wrong. Knowing Apple and the fact that they never used the term ARM in their entire keynote event, it's pretty certain that the tech giant would customize the chip, thereby making it incompatible with other ARM processors. Also, one wouldn't be surprised if Apple sets a signed bootloader and security checks on Mac apps to ensure they don't run on non-Apple hardware. Even in a best case scenario where the user keeps using the current Hackintosh Intel-based setup for years, it's likely that most apps would either stop receiving updates or get significantly slower considering Apple has already released toolkits for developers to compile or recompile apps optimized for M1. If you didn't already know this, most servers in the world run on some form of virtualization because it's cost effective and scalable. There are many kinds of virtualization like type 1 and type 2, etc. The one that's most interesting for Hackintoshing is type 1. Type 1 hypervisor is a bare metal hypervisor, which means that the operating system in this case, macOS, will have direct access to the hardware, which translates to no or minimal performance loss compared to other type of virtualization. And because it separates hardware from the OS, you do not need your OS to support the hardware itself. So for compatibility, this is brilliant. You can already do this to install macOS on practically any hardware, 
but with some quirks and in limitation. We will have to wait and see what the community will do with this once macOS is no longer released for Intel-based Macs. Well, they say, if there is a will, there is a way. Now that we understood all the possibilities, should you build a Hackintosh now? Well, the honest answer is that it depends. It depends on your workflow and what you want to do with macOS. Say you are a music producer and you work with thousands of tracks. A Hackintosh will still be more powerful and cheaper than say the Mac Pro or a Mac Studio. In fact, I just got a message from a friend in the music industry that wants to do exactly that. Also, if you are doing 3D design or VFX work, a Hackintosh with a powerful GPU like the AMD 6900 XT is going to serve you very well. But if you do any kind of video editing or image processing, the new M1 Pro or Max comes with dedicated media engines that can take care of encoding and decoding video, which translate in faster timeline scrubbing and rendering. If you already have a lot of Apple products, then a proper Mac will support many features like continuity and FaceTime that sometimes work and sometimes don't work on a Hackintosh. And between these two cases, there are the app developers that might get better performance on say a Hackintosh when it comes to build time, but they still need to have an M1 Mac for compatibility. So they might use both. There's also the case of people like me that use multiple OSs for different purposes on the same machine. I use Mac OS on my Hackintosh to edit videos and work. If I want a game, then I boot into Windows. If there is any kind of coding or hack that I want to try, I want to switch to Linux. You see, Hackintoshin was never for the regular consumers. It's a tight community of nerds and enthusiasts that love to do things the hard way. We are simply crazy people, so don't follow us. Jokes aside, I honestly believe that Hackintoshin is still a viable option for many people who fit in those categories I described and for many years to come. You don't believe me? Did you know there are still people running a Hackintosh inside a trash can Mac Pro from 2013? So if you're interested in building a Hackintosh, I will be making a new full guide that will explain the process from A to Z using new and simpler ways. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.